Welcome back to Flatpak Effects. So this is the image here that I'm gonna be working with. Again, you can use whatever you like, but what I'm gonna do is just create a new composition for our timeline here. This can be called your timeline. You can set this to be whatever resolution and duration for me is just six seconds. So I'm just gonna start by creating a new solid and this can be whatever color you like. I'm just using a dark sort of, I'm just using this dark sort of gray here. And then what I want to do is basically now start to add in bar animation. So we need to create that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is create a new composition. This is gonna be called my image one. And then if I open that up, I can basically drag in that picture of whatever it is that I'm gonna use. So this is gonna be the actual part of the main animation. So this first little bar animation here, I'm just going to right click and create a new composition from selection. And this one I can just rename to bar one. Now, if I go to that image, what I want to do is now basically isolate the part that I'm gonna use for that first little animation. So if I just grab my mask tool here and just sort of draw out a mask, which say went over this part that I want to keep, I need to add more, I can just use my pen tool to basically isolate that part of the image. What I want to do with this is then try and isolate this section as its own sort of bar. Is so I'm going to right click and go to the composition settings. And if you bring up the width and unselect this lock aspect, you can actually scale down, I'm holding shift, on the width of this Bar. So if for instance, I just set this to be like 200 and hit OK, I can just basically then resize this so that it fits inside that box. So we've got this at the moment. Now what we want to do is add some effects to this to sort of remove that background and so forth. So with that selected, I'm going to apply a bunch of effects here. The first thing I'm going to apply is the key light. Now you can find all of these by coming up to help, searching for key light, for instance, and then just dragging that effect straight onto that effects control for that layer. The next thing then what I'm going to do is just basically select that blue background and then that removes the background I've just dragged up on the screen again and drag this down to zero. I've then added a little bit of hue and saturation and just drag down on the saturation to make it more black and white. And then the final thing I've added is just a bit of glow. So the glow settings, you can follow along exactly here, but basically that just adds a little bit of glow to that item, just kind of makes it stand out a little bit better, makes it a bit more stylized. Otherwise you can download this entire composition Plus I also include a bonus composition for you if you join my ProMotion Crew community. You get access to not only this project, but all of the projects plus bonus projects for most of my YouTube tutorials. You can check that out via the link in the description. On my rectangle settings, I can basically just draw out a box. I'm holding shift and that's gonna draw out a box shape here. What I can then do is make that 3D. I'm hitting Y on the keyboard to reposition my anchor point here. So that's the pan behind tool. And then what I can actually start to do is if I go into the transform properties, I can actually start to mess around with the rotation. So if I go down to the X rotation and then move across on my timeline and then bring this back down to zero, I'm just going to then make this easy ease. You can also drag this out. And if I also make that layer uh, add a bit of motion blur to it, we kind of get a nice little effect playing out like this. So then what I want to do is once I've got one, I'm just simply going to duplicate it. But with this one, what I'm gonna do is if I go to my mask, I'm gonna select my mask as a whole and move this up and leave a small gap in between my layers here. So we kind of end up with something like that. Now at the moment, these are animating together. But if I go along the timeline, so I bring up those keyframes, if I select that top one, I use my pan behind tool to move this anchor point to there, that layer is then going to be animating in from the bottom of that square. What I can do is if I parent that one to that image and then offset this, what you'll notice is that it actually animates in with that layer. Now, if I move the, if I, 
keep this the same and then move these across, you'll see that they all basically animate in as one. Now I can basically just then duplicate this, bring up those settings, move that across, do the same thing again. So select that mask. You wanna move the mask as an entire piece. You can also just extend the end part if so they don't have to always be exactly even. But then what I'm going to do is if I reposition using my pan behind tool, I'm then going to basically parent this one to that layer underneath. So they're all basically like following each other. And you'll see we kind of get this cool on sort of folding effect. Now, one other thing you can also do on that, add a background. So I'm just gonna add like a solid in here, maybe make this a little bit lighter. Drag that to the back. So we've got a, a basically a backdrop for our image. What I can then do is add an effect to each one and that's individually gonna control that effect. So if I, for instance, go to my bottom one here and I just I basically paste in this brightness and contrast. Again, you can search for it up here. And if you look closely, what I've done is just add a little bit of brightness and contrast. If I drag up the contrast, it'll make it darker. If I copy this and then paste it onto that middle one, but drag down on the contrast, notice how they're slightly different. This is a kind of an interesting effect. If you drag up on this one, you can kind of create three different, slightly different color tiles without having to add all different effects to them. You can just use this one simple effect. Now, what I can also do is if I right click, I can create some text here. If I just say type out 1968 here or something like that, I can then drag this down, move that across. Also going to add motion blur and make this 3D and then parent it to that top layer. So they all kind of fold in together. Then to that, what I can actually do is I can then just add say a simple glow effect so if I come up here and just search for glow, I can add that to that layer. And now if I drag up on the output, I can then just drag down on the intensity and we kind of just have that finished effect. So something like that. Now if I go back to my main timeline now, I can drag in that bar and there you go. We've pretty much got that bar sitting over our backdrop. So now what I can do is if I resize this for instance, I wanna now add that animated line that goes across. So with nothing selected here on my timeline, what I'm going to do is just draw a simple line that goes across. I can drag down on the stroke. I don't want a fill on this, but I wanna set the color to be like this sort of yellow color or whatever color that you wanna use for this. And with that layer, what I'm going to do is if I just rename this one to timeline, so I can keep track here. What I'm gonna do is make sure it's above that bar layer because we don't want to basically see that animation. We want it to basically appear like it's coming from behind the line. If I take that timeline and then just add a simple glow, what I can do is if I use the original colors here, I'm just gonna basically scale up on this. I can increase that to intensity or decrease that and then just kind of mess around here by dragging down the threshold maybe a little bit more intensity, kind of get this nice little glow effect over, uh, over our timeline bar. Then what I can do with that is if I come down here, I can just use the simple trims path and I'm just gonna create a simple trims path here. So something like this, maybe go across to the end. So we kind of end up with this nice little animation. And what you can do here is say I want the line to sort of appear like get to this point. So I animate that and then I want it to slow down a little bit. So it's just gonna animate quite slowly as that animation then basically comes in at that point. And then it's gonna go quickly across towards our end point. So if I animate this, if I play through this now, maybe off center this. What I can do is with all of those selected, I can just make them easy ease. And another little trick is if you select all those, go down to keyframe interpolation, make this continuous bezier. On that 
graph editor, if I select that and then hit the graph editor, I want to basically just drag up on this. And then just drag in on these endpoints. Something like that. And then if I go back to my main timeline, one last thing that I'm going to kind of add over the top here, or two last things, is one thing I'm going to add is a null object. And this is going to be my controller. Move this down here, and I'm going to basically select all of these, link them to that controller. I'm going to hit S and P to create a scale and position keyframe. Hit U to bring up those keyframes. Create another two here. And with those ones at the beginning, what I'm going to do is just zoom in slightly. Maybe move these ones across. And then if I duplicate those, copy and paste those ones from the beginning, what I'm going to do is bring that across. If I zoom out slightly when we get to this point, maybe move this one across here, copy and then sort of paste that. Again, what I can do is then have very slight animation. Maybe something like this. I can also copy all or select all of those, make them easy ease, go into my graph editor. And again, you'll need to basically take all of those Take both of those settings, right click, go to keyframe interpolation, make this continuous bezier, and then you can basically just kind of slide up on these so they don't completely stop. You can also just kind of smooth them out. If this process is relatively new for you using this graph editor, or you really want to understand how to you know, use that graph editor effectively because this is really what makes all of your animations really smooth. So if you're struggling, you know, you're watching animations online, you're struggling to replicate a lot of the movement that they have, this is where a lot of the, those sort of movements are really made. What make it look really professional is using that graph editor. You can check out either my Animation Master course if you're an absolute beginner and never used After Effects before. I show you the basics of using After Effects, creating all different types of animations and also using the graph editor. If you're more advanced, then check out my Animation Pro course. We dive a lot deeper into really how you make your design stand out in animations and really use those tools like the graph editor to really make your animations look professional. I've had hundreds of students go through both of these courses and you can check it all out via the two links in the description below. A few little extra things that I added if I go back to my original composition here was I animated over the top, I added some little effects. So the one thing that I did was I right click, created a new adjustment layer. Now on that adjustment layer, I essentially just added the grain. So again, you can search for it up here, drag it over the top. The grain just adds a lot of texture over the top, which is really nice. And one thing I always add is the posterized time. That's what gives it that slow frame rate sort of look. You see this really popularized by Vox and similar sort of YouTube channels. And the other thing that I kind of did here was I just repeated this process to create all of these different bar animations. So I'm using those exact same steps that I showed you in the first step, but I just basically created another two bars and then just moved them further along my timeline. So nothing new that I haven't already shown you. I basically just repeated that process to keep making, you know, as many bars as I needed. The beauty of this is that if I go back and I change that image that's in this holder, then it automatically updates my main timeline. I don't have to go back through, reanimate everything. It automatically just updates, which is great. The other thing that I added was you'll see I've added a little bit of animation or extra animation to this line. So to do that, all that I did was if I go down here, I've added under the shape path, I came down to the stroke and I've added basically like this taper effect. So the taper is already activated. It's just basically set to none. So if you basically add these sort of settings here, that's what creates 
that sort of the different thickness of the line as it's moving along. So you can kind of create different, you know, interesting looking effects using that. Again, if you're a ProMotion Gold member, then you can also download this bonus composition, which is part of this, in that it just goes a little bit further into some different techniques, kind of expanding on what I've shown you in this tutorial. Apart from that, it's a simple and easy tutorial for this one. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up. You can also check out more videos just like this over here on the side of screen. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.